snow tracks. It was winter time on the island of Sodor. It had snowed all night. The trees were white, the cottages were white, and even the fat controller's railway was white. There was not an engine in sight. At Tidmouth Sheds, the engines looked out. Percy was very excited. It snowed! Thomas didn't like the snow. Bother! I'll have to wear my heavy snow plough. I don't like snow. You can get stuck in it. Stuff and nonsense. Snow is soft, but I am strong. It won't bother me. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Gordon, you must take some trucks to Brendam Docks. They are needed for an important coal delivery. You are a strong engine, but snow is slippery. Puff the long way around. Yes, sir. Thomas, you must deliver bundles of firewood to the stations. Yes, sir. And then the Fat Controller left. Thomas puffed with pride. That's a very special job. Not as important as mine. I shall go straight to the docks. I shall steam over every hill I come to. Gordon pumped his pistons proudly. Puffed the long way round. That means, Gordon, don't go up any hills. Hills are not too steep for me. I am strong. I am the best. And Gordon wished out of Tidmouth Sheds. Gordon huffed and he puffed. His smoke was grey against the snowy white countryside. Soon, Gordon came to a hill. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. And he chuffed right to the top. That was easy. But Gordon found going down the other side wasn't so easy. The rails were icy. Gordon's wheels slipped and slid. He went faster and faster. Perishing pistons! Spencer was huffing up the hill. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford were on board. They were having tea. Slow down, Gordon! But Gordon couldn't slow down. Slushy snow sprayed from his wheels. Spencer was covered from footplate to fender. Rattle my rods! I'm as dirty as a ditch! But Gordon didn't hear as he clickety-clacked on the icy tracks. Gordon came to another hill. It was even bigger. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. But the tracks were icy. The snow was deep and the hill was very, very steep. Gordon steamed slower and slower. Bust my boiler. This is hard work. Wheel turn by wheel turn, Gordon huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. He felt very pleased. I am the strongest. I am the best. But at the bottom of the hill, there was deep, deep snow. The snow flew up all over Gordon's face. Bubbling boilers, I can't see. Gordon rattled off the main track and into a siding, straight into the back of some sleigh trucks. Gordon was covered in thick grey dust. Oh, the indignity! At least I can see now. And Gordon huffed on towards the docks. The snow was deeper and deeper and deeper. Gordon could hardly huff through it. This is hard work. Now Gordon was at the bottom of Gordon's Hill. Gordon's Hill was the biggest of all, and it was covered in thick, thick snow. Gordon's Hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. I am strong. I am the best. 
But Gordon didn't feel so strong anymore, and he didn't feel the best. Gordon puffed against the snow. Snow is soft, and I am strong. It won't bother me. But the snow wasn't soft. It had become a giant snowball. It grew bigger and bigger. Gordon started to huff slower and slower. He thought his boiler was going to burst. Oh, my! Just then, Thomas chuffed up behind Gordon. Thanks for clearing the tracks, Gordon. Now I can deliver the firewood faster. Then there was trouble. The giant snowball was too big and too heavy. It started to push Gordon back down the hill. Look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Gordon and his trucks rolled back faster and faster. Thomas chuffed back faster and faster. He slipped into a siding and Gordon rolled round a bend. The giant snowball will surely miss us now. But Gordon was wrong. The giant snowball rolled down the track and crashed and bashed into Thomas. Help! Gordon saw Thomas and his truck of firewood lifted high in the air and derailed. Now it was Thomas who looked like a giant snowball. Luckily, no one was hurt. Gordon felt terrible. I'm not strong, and I'm not the best. It's a disaster. Gordon steamed slowly to Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'll huff my hardest to help you. Gordon heaved and hauled. He pushed and puffed, but the snow was too heavy. The snow was too thick. Gordon could not chuff through it to help his friend. I'm not strong enough, Thomas. I'll find Rocky. He's stronger than me. Gordon found Rocky at Brandon Docks. Hello, Thomas. I'll have you back on the tracks in no time. Soon, Thomas was no longer a snowball. He was a bright blue engine again. Thank you, Rocky. Now I must deliver my firewood. I'm very late. The station masters will be waiting, and they'll be very cold. I'll help you, Thomas. What about your very important job? I delivered my trucks to the docks. Now I can help you with your very important job. Thomas was happy to have his friends help. Thank you, Gordon. Thomas and Gordon chuffed cheerfully through the snow. And when they came to a hill, they always puffed around it. Together, Thomas and Gordon delivered the firewood to all the stations. The station masters were very pleased to see them. At last, Gordon and Thomas puffed home to Tidmouth Sheds. They were tired but they were happy to have been really useful. Gordon wished grandly. I have something very important to say. No engine is special, and every engine is best. Thomas and his friends whistled. They all agreed with Gordon. Buzzy Bees. It was a fine summer morning on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining, the birds sang, the flowers bloomed. And Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Brendam Docks. Thomas's good friend, Hero, was unloading at Brendam Docks. Good morning, Hero. The fat controller tells me I have a special special today for Farmer Trotter. Good morning, my friend. Yes, you do. Look. Thomas <gasps> gasped. Flatten my funnel. They look like small white wooden houses. Who lives in them? Bees, my good friend. Lots and lots of bees. Their houses are called hives. Inside the hives, the bees are very busy making honey. This made Thomas excited. The fat controller always has honey on his crumpets. 
I'll puff as fast as I can to deliver the beehives to Farmer Trotter. Suddenly, Hero was stern. Thomas, chuff slowly and smoothly. Take the truck through the woods. Then the bees will rest. You have to look after bees very carefully. Don't worry, Hero. I will. They'll be happy with me. Hero smiled. Very well. I have to deliver these crates. Then I must pick up some flowers from Farmer McCall. I will visit the bees when I've finished. Hero steamed slowly away. Thomas was coupled up to the beehives. Off we go, bees! Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. Ahead, he saw the track through the woods. The other track ran past a field full of flowers and bright sunshine. The field with flowers is much prettier than the woods. I'm sure the bees would like that better. So Thomas didn't take the track through the wood as Hero had told him to. Thomas huffed happily along. Buzzy bees are busy bees and busy bees make honey. Fuzzy bees are happy bees when it's warm and sunny. Suddenly, there was a buzzing and a bizzing. Thomas applied his brakes. Bust my buffers, what's that? Thomas looked over to the field. His bees were everywhere. They buzzed busily, flying from flower to flower. Thomas was surprised. Oh no! Come back, bees! Come back to your hives! The bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing in the field. Thomas tried again. Please come back, bees. We'll be late for Farmer Trotter. But still, the bees weren't listening to Thomas. Fizzling fireboxes. I can't take the beehives to Farmer Trotter empty. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The bees like flowers. I will chuff my hardest to Farmer McCall's and pick up the flatbed of flowers. Then the bees will buzz around my flowers and back to their hives. So Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Then he steamed swiftly away. Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. He saw the flatbed of flowers. I'm sure Hero won't mind if I borrow his flowers. I'll bring them back as soon as the bees are in their hives again. And Thomas huffed happily back to the field. The bees were still buzzing busily from flower to flower in the field. Then they saw Thomas's flowery flatbed. The buzzy bees left the field and buzzed all around Thomas. They flew into his funnel. They buzzed his boiler and whizzed his wheels. Trembling tracks! This flatbed of flowers wasn't a good idea. Go away, bees, please. Buzz into your hives and make honey. But the bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing. I must race like the wind. Then maybe the bees will be blown off my buffers and fly back to their hives. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. But the bees didn't mind the wind on their wings. They flew round Thomas like a buzzing cloud. Thomas chuffed and puffed to a siding. Very well, bees. If you won't leave me, I will leave you. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed of flowers and he clickety-clacked away down the track. Now the buzzy bees won't bother me. They're too busy making honey for the Fat Controller's tea. Thomas chuffed to a junction. Hero was there. Thomas was surprised to see his friend. Hello, Hero. You look puzzled. I am Thomas. Farmer McCall's flowers have disappeared, and you have still not delivered the bees to Farmer Trotter. 
He's waiting and worried. Thomas looked at his wise friend, Hero. He hadn't looked after the bees. He hadn't looked after their hives. And he hadn't taken the woodland track. But he had taken Hero's flowers. Hero, I have been very silly. I have been everything you told me not to be. But now I will do everything you told me to do. Please wait for me here. I will bring you back your flowers. Thomas's wheels started to whir and his boiler started to bubble. Thomas had a lot to do. Thomas puffed back to the flatbed of flowers. The bees were still buzzing, but Thomas didn't mind. Follow me, bees. I'll take you back to your hives. And Thomas wished away to the flatbed of beehives. Farmer Trotter is waiting for you, bees. You will like living on his farm. Then Thomas chuffed carefully away and took the track through the woods. The woods were deep and dark. The bees felt cold. It's time to go home, all you busy bees. It's time to make honey in the shade of the trees. And the busy bees buzzed into their hives. Farmer Trotter was waiting for Thomas. He was very pleased to see his new beehives. Thank you, Thomas. But why have you brought me all those flowers? They're not for you, Farmer Trotter. Hero is waiting for these. I must hurry. Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed down the track. Hero was waiting for Thomas. So, my good friend, here are my flowers. I'm sorry, Hero. You will be late, I know. But from these flowers, Farmer Trotter will have the best honey on Sodor. The two friends smiled. It had been a very busy, buzzy day. Creaky Cranky. It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. All the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. You're creaky, Cranky. What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes, I'm as strong as any other engine. You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steamed sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. 
I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wooden barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again? What are you doing with that wood? This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wood and barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove Cranky wrong and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steamed stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again? Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised a flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and judded. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no! Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Thomas, what are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then the Fat Controller looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder. Just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer, but he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful, and he had to be really useful. 
Spencer, I need your help. You are very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bales and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm, very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. But a plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best. And Thomas huffed happily away. Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed. <laughs> and that made Thomas <laughs> laugh too. <laughs> Tickle Pink. James was the brightest red engine on the island of Sodor. His bright red paint made him feel very proud and it made him feel very special. One morning, James was about to puff out of Tidmouth's sheds. The fat controller arrived to see him. James, you are to have a new coat of paint. You must puff straight to the steamworks. James was pleased. Thank you, sir. I will be the smartest engine on the whole island. James whistled with pride. James puffed proudly into the steamworks. The workmen were waiting. First, they took off James's old coat of red paint. Then, they applied a special pink paint. The pink paint was to go under the new red coat. It was to keep the water out. Soon, James was covered from fender to firebox in bright pink paint. Just then, the fat controller arrived. My granddaughter is having her birthday party today. Emily was to pick her up at Maithwaite Station, but she has broken down. The other engines are busy. You must collect the children and take them to the party. But, sir, I'm not ready. You're quite ready enough, James. Leave right away. The party starts at tea time. You mustn't be late. The fat controller left. James was upset. Oh, no. Pink is a silly colour. I don't want anyone to see me looking silly. James puffed up to a junction. Emily was there. She was waiting for the workmen. Cinders and ashes. You're bright. Pink, James? Emily laughed and <laughs> laughed. <laughs> oh, no! Everyone is going to laugh at me because I'm pink. James didn't want to be laughed at. Then an idea flew into his funnel. If I see any other engines on the way to the children, I'll hide. James chuffed through the countryside. Ahead, he could see Toby puffing along the track. I don't want Toby to see my pink paint. He'll think I'm silly. I'll hide under this tree until he's gone. So James chuffed under the branches of a willow tree. Toby puffed slowly towards him. James kept as quiet as he could so that Toby wouldn't hear him. Suddenly, James heard a whistle he knew well. It was Gordon. Clickety-clack, express on the track. 
With a wheesh and a whoosh and a whistling wind, Gordon thundered down the express line. The branches of the tree blew up in the air. There was James in his bright pink paint. Toby stopped. He was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes, James. You're a big pink engine. <laughs> James felt very silly. He didn't like being laughed at, so he steamed swiftly away. James puffed on towards Maithwaite. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Diesel. Oh, no! It's Diesel! He's sure to laugh! I have to hide quickly. James saw some trucks. They were piled high with coal. James puffed into the siding and hid behind the trucks. Oh, this is a good hiding place. Then Diesel oiled into the siding. Fizzling fenders! Diesel had to shunt the coal trucks. Diesel shunted away the trucks that James was hiding behind. So James puffed to the next trucks. Then Diesel shunted those away as well. Quickly, James rolled behind the last two trucks. Then Diesel shunted them away. Oh, no! Diesel was surprised. What are you doing, James? You're a big pig, Steamy! <laughs> James felt terrible. Being laughed at by Diesel was worst of all. So James chuffed quickly away. James knew he was getting late. He had to pick up the children before tea time. I'll take a shortcut through this tunnel. That way, I'm sure to chuff to Maithwaite on time. James puffed out of the tunnel. Then he heard a whistle. It's Gordon. Oh, no. I don't want Gordon to laugh at my silly pink paint. I have to hide. So James reversed back into the tunnel and waited. Gordon pulled up to the tunnel. He could see steam. Who's hiding in there? Express coming through. Come on out. James didn't want to come out. He was sure Gordon would laugh at him. Then Thomas and Percy puffed up. What's happening? Who's in there? I don't know, but the Express can't wait. James knew the engines were waiting for him, and so were the children. If I keep hiding, I'll be late to pick up the children, and they'll be late for their party. So with a puff and a huff, James chuffed slowly out of the tunnel. He was very unhappy. James, uh, you're all uh, uh, pink. Uh, what a funny colour. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hide too if I was bright pink. James <laughs> felt terrible. All the engines were laughing. But James knew what he had to do. I feel very silly, but I can't let the children down. James hurried to Maithwaite as fast as his pistons could pump. James saw Spencer at a junction. Spencer thought James looked very silly. <laughs> oh dear, James. Bright pink really isn't your colour. <laughs> James didn't like this, but this time, even though he felt silly, he didn't hide. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Henry passing by. <laughs> My word, you do look pink. But James didn't hide. He felt silly, but he didn't stop. Must collect the children. Must collect the children. James puffed towards Maithwaite. He could see the children waiting. I'm sure the children will laugh too. They will think I look very silly. And he steamed sadly onto the station. James pulled into Maithwaite. The fat controller's granddaughter didn't laugh. And she didn't think James looked silly at all. She smiled. She was very excited and very happy. James, you're a pink engine. Pink is my favourite colour. James couldn't believe it. Do you really like pink? I love pink, and so do all my friends. Look, 
Pink is our favourite colour. James was so happy it made his boiler bubble. I'm a very lucky engine. James puffed proudly into the town hall just in time for the party. The children laughed and clapped their hands. James the bright pink engine was the hero of the day. Slippy Sodor. It was a very special day on the island of Sodor. The Mr. Bubbles clown show was coming to town. Mr. Bubbles was famous. He could blow the biggest bubbles ever seen. All the engines were happy and excited, except for Thomas. He had a cracked funnel and had to puff to the steamworks for repairs. At the steamworks, everything was huffing and puffing and steaming and wheeshing. Everything except Thomas. He waited sadly on the turntable for Victor to arrive. Thomas didn't like it when he needed repairs. It meant waiting inside and not having fun out on his branch line. Don't look so miserable, Thomas. We'll find you a nice spare funnel and have you out and about in no time. Kevin, let's see what we have for our good friend Thomas. Yes, boss. Coming right up. Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Oh, Kevin. Well, that won't do at all, my friend. This funnel is much too small. Kevin, let's try something a little larger. Yes, boss. Right away, boss. Oh, suffering so dark, Kevin. What are you doing? Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Yes, we know, Kevin. We know. Try this one for size, Thomas. No, 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 no. This one is too large. We only have one more spare funnel, boss. I'll be back in two toots of a whistle. Let's hope it's a good fit, my friend, or you'll be here for quite a while. <sighs> here it is, Thomas. Oops, uh, sorry, Thomas. It was a slip of the hook. I know, Kevin, I know. Magnificent! A perfect fit. This funnel makes me feel silly. Not at all, my friend. It's... it's... splendid. It will help you puff very well until your old funnel is fixed. Now, chuff along. I hear that Mr. Bobbers has a very special special for you at Brendan Docks. Thomas chuffed into Brendan. He was very unhappy. Mr. Bubbles was waiting. He was very happy to see Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Mr. Bubbles has a very important job for you, Thomas. This is my very special bubble liquid. It makes the biggest bubbles you have ever seen. I need it for my show this afternoon. Please take it to Knapford Station. So Thomas backed up slowly and carefully to the flatbed and was coupled up. Now, you mustn't spill any of the liquid, Thomas. Puff slowly and carefully. Yes, sir. We'll meet you at Knapford. Then James chuffed up. Hello, Thomas. Ha! That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back, and he didn't like James laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away as quickly as he could. He forgot all about going slowly and carefully. Later, Thomas stopped at a crossing. He saw Gordon. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back, and he didn't like Gordon laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Gordon as quickly as he could. He wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road, but Thomas didn't notice. The fat controller was driving Mr. Bubbles on the road. Then there was trouble. The car skidded and skated right into a muddy ditch. Thomas raced on. He stopped at a signal and saw Henry in a siding. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. 
<laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back, and he didn't like Henry laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Henry as quickly as he could. He still wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. The Fat Controller and Mr Bubbles drove toward a bridge. Slow down, Thomas! You're spilling my bubble liquid! But Thomas didn't hear them. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. The Fat Controller's car skidded and skated right into a haystack. But Thomas didn't notice. He went even faster. And so did the Fat Controller and Mr Bubbles. Thomas didn't see them, but he did see a red signal. Thomas put on his brakes. More bubble liquid splished out and sploshed onto the road. The Fat Controller's car skidded and skated right into a pond. But Thomas was too worried about his funny funnel to notice. He raced on towards Knapford. At last, Thomas puffed into Knapford, just as the Fat Controller and Mr Bubbles arrived. The Fat Controller was very cross. Thomas, you were going much too fast. The special bubble liquid splished and splashed out of the tank. And now the tank is empty. And it's almost time for my show to start. The children will be very disappointed. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. The only special bubble liquid left is at Brendam Docks. Now there isn't time to pick it up before the show. Yes, there is. I'm sure I can puff to Brendam and back in time for your show. <laughs> Very well, Thomas. But this time you must be careful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Soon... Thomas arrived back at Brendam Docks. A new tank of bubble liquid was loaded onto his flatbed, and Thomas puffed carefully away. Thomas saw Edward at a crossing. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't like Edward laughing at his funny funnel. But this time, Thomas didn't pump his pistons and race away from Edward as quickly as he could. He chuffed carefully on to Knapford. Then Thomas puffed past some children. The children saw his funny funnel. They were excited. They thought Thomas was going to be part of Mr Bubble's show. Thomas was surprised. He gave the children an extra loud toot. The children laughed even more. Thomas liked to see the children laugh. Laughing. They're laughing at my funny funnel. It makes them happy. And that made Thomas happy. Thomas steamed back into Knackford. The children cheered. <laughs> well done, Thomas. You haven't spilled one drop of my special bubble liquid. And you're just in time for my show. Later, the children clapped and cheered at the Mr Bubbles Clown Show. They had never seen such big bubbles. Then the children spotted that Thomas's funny funnel looked just like Mr Bubbles's hat. Thank you, Thomas, the funniest engine on Sodor. Soon, everyone was laughing. And Thomas, most of all. <laughs> Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on the Fat Controller's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to, like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. 
Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favourite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he's the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. <whistles> Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botty at the docks. Miss Botty looked very grand. I'm pleased to be travelling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then the fat controller arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's trucks of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Wanna come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks, and then I'll take Miss Potty to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Botty smiled sweetly from her carriage. Charlie pulled up alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. Yippee! <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. The funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Botty could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who's your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun. And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our steamworks. Kevin. Sorry, boss. And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botty sang to the steamworks. <laughs> then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botty straight to the town hall, but he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botty to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there! We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun! Thomas wanted to be fun. So he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Alicia Botty juddered and jumped. And the couplings jiggered and jiggled. Looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> and this is even more fun! We must go, Miss Botty. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye! If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Knapford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. 
Let's race again! Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking the fat controller to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must wish like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late. I mustn't be late. Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had come loose. Thomas raced on to the town hall alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir. The fat controller looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabel? And where is Miss Botty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. The fat controller boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabel, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabel and Miss Botty. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabel first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Botty singing. Hooray! Thomas found Miss Botty by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Botty singing. Miss Botty, we must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Botty cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabel. The fat controller was cross. At last, Thomas. You've made Miss Botty very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to and such fun. That made Thomas smile. And so did his fun friend, Charlie. Time for a story. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. Thomas had worked hard all morning. He tooted happily to the children as he chuffed back to Tidmouth Sheds. The fat controller was waiting. He had an important special. This afternoon, there is to be a special story time for the children at the library. I need an engine to collect the new storybooks from Maithwaite Station and take them to the library. Thomas wished his hardest that he would be given the special. Listening to stories with the children was his favourite thing to do. Thomas, you will deliver the special. Make sure the books are at the library on time. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed fast along the tracks. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas steamed into Maithwaite Station. Hello, Thomas. I'm here to collect the new storybooks. We'll have your trucks ready in two toots of a whistle, Thomas. Thomas saw the storybooks piled high in the two trucks. There were red books, green books and blue books. There were big books, small books, square books and even round books. They look wonderful. Soon Thomas was coupled up to the trucks. 
I must hurry. I have to deliver the storybooks to the library on time. Thomas was very excited. He pumped his pistons and puffed quickly out of the station. Thomas didn't wait for the books to be covered. Thomas steamed quickly along the track. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. The books began to jiggle and joggle, but Thomas didn't notice. Thomas puffed fast towards the junction. He could see the signal ahead was red. I don't want to stop. The children are waiting for their special story time. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can take the branch line. I know there aren't any junctions on that. So Thomas puffed quickly down the branch line. Thomas felt very pleased. He chuffed faster and faster, and the books jiggled and joggled more and more. But Thomas didn't notice. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas raced round a bend. Ahead, there was a sign for works on the track. Oh, bother! I'm sure the works on the tracks won't stop me. So Thomas puffed faster and faster. Then there was trouble. Workers were mending the broken track. The broken track was very bumpy. Thomas bumped and jumped. The books jiggled and joggled. Then Thomas hit the biggest bump of all. Whoa! Cinders and ashes! The trucks bounced high in the air. They crashed and bashed. They clattered and shattered down to the tracks. Thomas put on his brakes. The books flew high and wide through the air and landed all over Farmer McCall's field. <gasps> oh, my! The trucks are broken. The storybooks are all over the field. And the children now won't have their special story time. And it's all my fault. I was in such a hurry to be on time, I didn't want to wait. I should have waited for the books to be covered. And I shouldn't have taken the bumpy branch line. Oh, dear. <sighs> Fizzling fireboxes. What am I going to do? Thomas looked at the storybooks. The sun was shining on them. The books looked even redder and greener and bluer than they had in the trucks. The storybooks look so pretty in this field. I wish the children could see them. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I'll bring the children to the storybooks. They can have a picnic story time in the sunshine. That really will be special. So Thomas puffed off to collect the children. First, I must collect Annie and Clarabelle. Victor and Kevin were busy at work as Thomas chuffed into the Sodor Steamworks. Hello, Victor. I'm here to collect Annie and Clarabelle. I'm going to take the children to a special picnic story time in the sunshine. That's a wonderful idea, my friend. The children will like that. They always have their best time with you, Thomas. Thomas was pleased Victor and Kevin liked his idea. Later, Thomas huffed happily out of the steamworks with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas puffed proudly up to the library at the town hall. The children were waiting. They were very surprised to see Annie and Clarabelle instead of trucks of storybooks. Today, I am taking you to an extra special story time. It's a picnic story time in the sunshine. All aboard! The children had never had a picnic story time. They thought it was a wonderful idea. Thomas blew his whistle and chuffed cheerfully away.
Thomas puffed towards the junction. This time, Thomas waited. Then, he took the branch line back to Farmer McColl's field. Thomas chuffed slowly and carefully up to Farmer McColl's field. Here we are, the Picnic Storytime Special. The children cheered. They could see all the different coloured books in the field. They were very excited. This was the best story time ever. Thomas watched as the children ran onto the field. They each picked up a book and their teacher began to read with them. This is a story, children, all about a little boy. A little boy who didn't like waiting. He didn't like waiting because he thought he'd miss out on all the good things. But then he found out that good things are worth waiting for. As the story began, Thomas looked at all the happy children. He smiled his biggest smile. The children's picnic story time really is worth waiting for.